Yeah. Evening everyone, thanks to everyone for coming out in such good numbers to this Grantham Society uh, meeting. My friend is Robert Clark, or Rob A. Clark is literally his name, which he got completely by accident. Yeah. It's another story. Uh, he's going to give a talk on uh, football history in Grantham's Bay up until the end of or World War II, after 1945. Yeah. And, uh, so um, it will be very interesting. I've seen some of his notes and slides. And um, no, no one better to talk about it than Rob, who's done an immense amount of research um, on behalf of all the football teams he's been involved in in Grand Town. Yeah. Uh, and we have a display here with some later photographs as well, and some cups that Rob will tell you about afterwards. So enjoy, and I think with that we'll just turn it over to Rob. Oh. Hey. Hey. <laughs> you ladies and gentlemen, welcome to tonight's talk on the history of football in Latin Spain up until 1945. I'm going to begin tonight's talk with a question for you all. What's the name of the football pitch you want to associate with Anton Spade? Seafield Park. Seafield Park. Black Park. Black Park. Rob? There you go. Tell me about Rob. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I, I, I tell someone who's going to talk about it. I tell someone in the crowd who's going to Black Park. So I'll tell a question. Okay. Why is football commonly played on the Black Park? Well, this year being 2023, let me take you back 156, 156 years. The year is 1867, for which a point of reference, on the 1st of July, the British North Atlantic Treaty came into force, creating the Dominion of Independent Canada. On the 14th of July, a Swedish chemist called Arthur Nobel demonstrated dynamics for the first time. So what do these two have in common? Well, on Tuesday, the 9th of July, the following words were published. Tonight at half past eight, a number of gentlemen are required to meet at number three, Anton Tyler Castle, for the purpose of following from a football club. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is Mr. Lewis Black. Lewis, Lewis was born in Tullough. He was raised and educated not far from here, in fact, just next door, in Grantham Street, Orphanage. Mr. Black occupied the chair of the meeting of the Young Man's Christian Association, more we'll commonly known as the YMCA, of, of which gentlemen who took part in football matches in the local Glasgow area were to be given their own club. Going by the ports, much was made of the debate, including the proposed name. The names included the Souths, the Northerners, Mr. Lewis Buck favoured the name Manager Football Club and an artist to his connection with Grantham Spay. Such was the debate going on, often defeated by one vote, Queen's Park was chosen instead of the name Manager Football Club. Queen's Park, if you're aware, is the five famous in the idea just got from history. At the meeting, Mr. Lewis Buck was elected a captain with a seat on the committee. He was promoted to the President's Chair in 1868 and appointed secretary in 1869. He did not accept the office but was to remain in the committee, which he did for another five seasons until 1871. He remained on the club committee until 1875. So what's this do with Grantham Spay? Well, in 1872, there was only four associated football clubs in Scotland, so Queen's Park were invited to play in the first ever English FA Cup. London-based club, the Wanderers were to be their opponents in the semi-final. The match was Queen's Park apparently dominated and did a no-no draw at the Oval Cricket Ground in London. The replay was decided on the toss of a coin and it was to be played again in London a week later. Unfortunately, Queen's Park could not commit to shoving back down to London twice in one week and forfeited their semi-final. Wanderers went on to defeat the Royal Engineers in the first ever English FA Cup final, also at the Oval, 
But as an absolute good wall, they sent a wicked basket of footballs back to Queen's Park. Mr Lewis Black, in turn, is reported to have sent five of the footballs back home to Glanton Speed Offners, where the young boys got permission to, put, to play on what was then the ladies' night of golf course, the site of the current Suspice Show Ground, Club, Cubs Hut and County Glam School, and the Glanton children were decided to play in football on Mr Black's Park. Yeah. Moving on, the earliest reference I could find to organise football rather than to grant some space football team was in the publication The Elgin and Cornet Courier, with a letter published dated the 1st of April 1879 from a moniker for your play. Yeah. The letter requested a collection from the article of the previous week from a march between Abernathy and Granton. The latter highlighted the fact that the Abernathy team consisted of local boys who just happened to be at a ground where while the Granton team was le likely organised, number of players totaling 40 individuals from Inverness who had been practising all winter. The letter went on to pass judgment on the football reporter, something I know very well. <laughs> for the use of the phrase I can beat victory. For Granton, when in fact it was only one going each half and Granton won the match 2 0. This was followed up by a further article also in the Elgin Corner Courier, published on the 13th of April, sorry, the 13th of May 1879, when a grand ball was held for the first successful season of Grand Football Club. This, of course, means that Granton Football Club were formed in 1878, the same years as the are both New Bayern England, same years after the Football Club. There was also a club formed called Newton Heath Lehman. <coughs> Does anybody know who Newton Heath Lehman turned into five years here? Manchester United. Manchester United. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 1870 also signed for another match to the right of history. When the Battle of Lane Sheffield, the world's first ever game under floodlights took place between the Sheffield Association and a selection of local clubs. This plaque shows on the main stand and this gate. And many thanks to Sheffield United, Cup historian Mr. Marcy Young, who took this photo for me during lockdown. There's an interesting fact about Furlight, which connects back to Sussex Thistle, is that I believe the only senior club who have Furlight directly behind the goals. I believe this is to avoid interference with the golf club and the tennis My research then me to discovering a story about this one here. This is Malcolm James Eden Fraser, 1860-1886. He is one of the most celebrated Scottish footballers of the Victorian area before his parents were dead. Eden, as you would from called during his lifetime, a law born in Otto Canada, has a connection because his father, John, was once in the priest in the native church of Richard Abney. And Mr. Eden was named after Dr. John Eden, a professor of biblical literature. Two years later, now John and his family came back to Scotland and congregated for a congregation in the global area. Now Eden started out at Keyland Club. Club and at the age of 18, he was invited to join Queen's Park, where he won the first of his five cups in Scotland against Wales in 1880. On the 27th of March, the Scotland won by one. The second March for Scotland is one year of note. On the 11th of March 1882, again at Hampden in a 5 1 victory 
because the Lord had me in on them. This marks the stores, subject to a famous war mural at the Hampton Bone Club, as you're here. Oops, this is yeah. 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 yeah, 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 that's still there. Yeah, in this march, Scotland wore this these shirts. These shirts are blue and white hoops. Locks belong to Edinburgh Buckingham's rugby club, with the addition of a gold white white lampet band. I would be able to get in touch with our Edinburgh Buckingham's recently via social media. And they will provide me with this photo. Eden Fraser is shown in the light. Next is teammate, Mr. Andrew Watson. That's in the top right. He's on the shoulder of the gentleman's seat. However, any historians of the show will know the Scotland's regular colours during this time were rosy colours of yellow and pink. <laughs> so, it is not recorded why Scotland would wore in the blue and white, but what is recorded, it is possibly the first ever instance in world football history of a changed colours. No wonder. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Eden Peter's teammate at both Queen's Park and Scotland, as is referred to, was Mr Andrew Watson. Andrew Watson was the first famous black footballer in Scottish football and the subject of a recent documentary on BBC Scotland. Moving on. The first actual football match I could report for the reference to a Gansom Football Club I could chase was from the Aberdeen Western Journal dated the 14th of December 1880. The report stated that a match took place at Nan Lakes between Granton and Nan Football Clubs and the Nantrail Association of the Rose. Nantrail Association of the Rose was 60 minutes out, four periods of 20 minutes, no change of ends, which resulted in nine when the game between all. It was finally reported that during the whole game, nine, greatly assisted by a northeast wind, kept the Granton Club in the half for the entire match. Things were changed for the Dundee. One of them, the Mark Vargo, was discovered. An Albion Christian Journal dated the 28th of October 1902. It was reported that a meeting of a young man favoured the formation of a new football club to be held in the Susby Tower of Pantheon's Bay. On the previous Saturday, the 25th of October, there was a good attendance and they began to form the name Susby Thistle Football Club. Mm. Okay. The office bay was elected with Captain W. Cowie, Vice Captain A. Bain, Secretary R. Kluchunk, Sergeant G. Grant, and a management committee. It also decided a match between Dufton and Susby Thistle would take place in Gunnings Bay on the Saturday 8th November. However, no record of this march could be traced, and such as this was named as Spirit Mall Reports for the next 91 years. <coughs> On to season 1910-1911, by that time, Granton Football Club has changed the name to Granton On Spay Athletic Football Club. They had taken part in the first season in the Scottish Junior uh, Association. Much reports on this league have had with different success and very detailed reports between the two clubs, apart from the one in the North Scotland Junior Cup. Ground and Spear Athletic were drawn home in the first round of the competition against Kunusi. But the visitors cut the fixture and Ground and Spear Athletic were given a walkover into the quarter final. The quarter final match was a home fixture against the Seaforth Highlanders, based at Fort George. And this is a part of photo. Actually, shows a poster from the game showing the colours worn by the Seaforth Highlanders. This was also verified by people at Fort George who confirmed that the drone is actually at Seaforth Park. 
The match took place on the 11th of February. After five minutes played, Liggett scored a spectacular shot from 25 yards, giving Granton take the lead. Shortly afterwards, however, the Seaford hindered at equalised and the left back headed in a corner kick. Granton's Bay Athletic increased the pressure in two goals from DC Grant from a corner kick and a penalty gave the home side a 3 1 half time lead. Midway through the second half, Salt scored to make it 4 1 before in the close of the minute, the Seaford Henders scored twice, but Granton's Bay Athletic held on to win the uh, entertain match 4 3. It is worth noting that uh, in many reports, the service team of the Seaford Henders players were only referred to by their rank and service number. No names were reported. <laughs> On Saturday the 4th of March, Counter Speed Athletic beat the semi-final at home against Crosby Sutherland. The match was reported to be played in front of a large crowd who played the showers of sleet throughout the game. Camden Spear Athletic took the lead in the quarterfinal with five minutes played to Stewart. They were holding out until midway to the second half when an unfortunate accident happened to goalkeeper Tempton, who found his knee low crippled. He carried on, but shortly afterwards, Masterson chose the goal for Crosby Sutherland. And although the visitors are intense pressure, the match finished 1 1. The replay date of the 18th of March was set, but there was one major issue. Carlton's Bay Athletic informed Gosby that he could not afford the cost of stream tickets to take back to Gosby. Okay. However, on here in the club's plate, there was a whip round in the town and local businesses who provided the, to cover the cost to get the team to Cosby. In front of a large crowd and an excellent playing surface, the first half ended goalless. In the 56 minutes, Cosby's left back was forced to stop a goal by him shot his hand to see a penalty kick. Salt took the kick for the Grand Spear Athletic and scored to give the visitors the lead. Soon afterwards, however, a Gosby forward was fouled in the penalty area and they equalised. Grand Spear Athletic dominated the match and passed right up into the final whistle. However, the match of 8 minutes ended 1 1. Following a short break, the match went into extra time. There was just 8 minutes remaining. And the and final to be decided by a toss of a coin when the Gosby goalkeeper hesitated at Alan Salt, an opening from 50 yards out to score a goal. Cummins scored another goal just before full time, so it was forcibly given offside. However, Clampton Pierce had it held out to win 2 1. The visitors, however, loosed off the park without celebrating, grabbed the kit, and were attempting to cut the same party Clampton in Spain. <laughs> However, officials from Gosby Sutherland persuaded the opponents to stay as their guests and the night of hospitality in due celebrating getting into the final and the same back to Canton on Sunday morning. In the weeks leading up to the final against Inness Little Seconds at Inness Cutting the Cutting's Ground at Country Park, regular after advertisements appeared in the Susby House <coughs> and the Council Advertiser a cup final special ticket was supported going to the match where we couldn't have as fair as long as you took no hand luggage. <laughs> <laughs> the North of Scotland Junior Cup final took place on Saturday the 8th of April 1911. It was reported that over 230 people purchased shared tickets to go to the cup final from Grandes Bay. Mr. Forbes, the Secretary of the North Junior Football Association, took charge of the month appointing himself for that last league, and two of the associates were appointed as neutral linesmen. Grantham Spear Athletic got the cup final after a remarkable start after just five minutes played when DC Grant long through from the win, thus between the second defence and a lower effect 
appeared to cut to the goalkeeper, the low sun in his eyes to score open goals. However, he soon made up his hour with spectacular saves from McKinnon and Pearson to keep his way down. In the seconds, Sony got more into the match and comes to be aesthetic. Goalkeeper Kuchuk got into a muddle and the ball was seen net bound until Stuart this up to the goal line and cleared the ball with a remarkable overhand kick. Just before half time, comes to be a specific semi final UP hero sold, so a penalty kick saved by this will keep on main. During the second half, Johnson's defence was won on top and prevented more or more than equal to anything to show for his good muster. Then shortly before full time, in a breakaway move, DC Grant leads to from deep with a neat one to McKinnon and fired an unsealable shot in the corner net. This resulted in a 2 0 victory for Grant's Spear Athletic to the complete supplies of the Football Societies of MS, who all predicted comfortable a uh, win for MS as well seconds. The president of MS Captain Cutton presented the trophy and badges to the winning team, conducting them on winning a fine display of football and the first at in the junior football. For a matter of interest, I have recently contacted the Football Museum at Hamden, and they think this trophy might be in the box along with another 70 trophies. I've been invited down to Hampton to find the trophy, and if I do find it, I've been given permission to take a part to Spain. Something I hope to do soon in the near future. A small crowd of those who could not attend the march gathered at the post office in Hampton, Spain, where a telegram was received of the score were live viewers. The young boys of Grant Spain, unable to make the train journey, while sat running through the town with the food traffic, spreading the news of Grant and Victory. The trophy was taken to the shop of wholehearted supporter Mr. R.S. Ross to put on public display. This is a photograph taken of the victorious team. There was a photo taken a few seconds earlier, which appeared in something so held at the time. However, this photo remained undeveloped until I contacted the National Archives in Kew, who held a plate of an undeveloped photo taken by Alexander London. This photograph was developed, and now it is in my position, and I now hold the copyright for this photo. One very interesting appendix to discover the Cup winner, Cup winning Dallas Bay Athletic team was on the far right, the left, point of one. Is that the point here? The gentleman that is far right in the ship is up for this. Is listed in R. Cluckshot Jr., pretending to be Bobby Cluckshot, <coughs> as for both for information. It's a name not really associated with football, but if you're a golf fanatic, I'm sure you know who Bobby Cluckshot is. Bobby Cluckshot's family also provided it all on a cup for Country Foot Club, which I'm sure Domino had a few things, which name was? Yeah. The Cluckshot Cup? Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. Quite a few things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Following the outbreak of World War I in 1914, yeah. Yeah. Any report of football disappeared from local newspapers until an article was published on the 10th of December 1914 in the South Behold. The report began stating that there was a national scandal that professional footballers were still playing and not enlisting to, for the call-up. The report has stated that people who 
and the professor from Morris, what's this, Will Lopez, who could put the more used to the man in the front line or the jail ground in the tension for Morris. However, the Scottish Football Association decided football is a messy escape and has decided that football should continue and soldiers who are listed to various camps could continue playing. On the 15th, on the 5th of February 1915, it was reported in the Aberdeen Weekly Journal that Corporal Agnes Sort of the Black Watch, Lawyer Hendricks, who just four years earlier has scored two goals for Gunsby Athletic in the North of Scotland Junior Cup and final, he played with the Cosby, had died from wounds received. Further details of the investigation by myself. The real that he actually died on the 18th of October 1914. One of his comrades was reported in the Aberdeen Journal that Count Coppel Salt had a clever mission of his own death the night before and handed an officer his gold watch, which was unclaimed in the back from all your friends at Compton's Bay Athletic. Remarkably, I was also able to discover his headstone at Walgate in France. He has also appeared in the book entitled Poppies from the Hearts of South Bay, which is a very handsome. One deviation from my notes very quickly. Can I be telling what's long with that headstone to be in a war grave? No? It wasn't during the war. No. Yeah. Oh, well, most of war graves, headstones are white. This one must be planning because Short's family who were in Canada, yeah, had to go permission for the other means to be buried beside them. So it's, like, it's just like, just like a, it's a farm headstone and then and then walk it, which is most unusual. Yeah. A further food note to record the story. Given his grandson's big connections, when I told the story to one of my friends, to some of you tonight, I came up with the idea that being connections that Anna Salt should be remembered on the Sussby War Memorial. However, early late last year, Mr. John Harvey was you know, Harvey being Kikodi with John? Uh, Kikodi. Thanks, yeah, Kikodi. Yeah. Thanks, sir, Kikodi. Yeah. John Harvey walking through Hustle War Memorial and he's not been named in the Kikodi War Memorial. It's the time of his birth. Yeah. So he is remembered. Mm. However, I have found out that his war medals were never presented. So I am currently trying to see some of the Salt family to see if they would like his war medals are stolen from them with Okay, so moving on. On the 7th of November 1919, the Aberdeen Weekly Journal reported a new football club had been formed in Compton's Bay and were to play Abalawa. Abalawa were defeated by Tunnel. On the 25th of February 1922, Compton Football Club hosted Elgin Juniors Select, their family and the home side side one and mock with an 8-1 victory. However, unfortunately, no deal was this much recorded. During the 1922-23 season, Gump Football Club competed in the Sussby League along team like Arsenson, Kegelke, Abalawa, Dufton, and there was even a team from the town village of Bucksport in Rondalek. Gump Football Club's pitch was a nan silver titled the Ladies Golf Course or the Bar Park, was officially named Sifu Park. <coughs> after being named after the Countess Nina Cowan, daughter of our seafood. The match was played against the Cup and the Cut in 11, with Compton 1 in 4 3. The following season, 23 24, Compton FC entered the Manchester Junior League. 
and here they would face the unions. I would sit in, lost your mouth, tucked in, and fall asleep. So. Cartons could not have asked for a more tougher start to the new junior season, but I uh, marked against the Lane and League champions for Sissel. The Jugs East are full and victory in the opening match. However, because they were now a junior team, Clampton Football Club were also permitted to take part in the Scottish Junior Cup. I want to make a footnote here. I would like to state I now stand corrected in a football programme I produced in 1983 for Suspect Sissel, which I indirectly stated that this was the first Junior Cup title to be played in Clampton Bay. It would be a few years out. <laughs> <laughs> the setup for the match was on the 15th of September 1928 when Clampton Bay defeated Land Blyde. What happened afterwards is not recorded, but for whatever reason, Clampton Bay's Football Club's name did not appear in the next round. On to 29.30, and Clampton Football Club reached the final of a new competition called the White Horse Cup. That's the Scottish Junior Cup. Maybe we don't know where it is. The White Horse Cup was named after this pub in Owen, which I believe is still a public house to this day. And they also got the trophy in the building. And again, I have been given permission to go down and take a photograph of it, or if I wish, to take it up for a part of the display later on. So, the last one is to the Junior Cup. <coughs> the first round was to be against the Unis of Elgin, who scuts the game. Round two was to be a front and speed against Lossmouth. The coast side duly turned up for the game, but everything supplied, they declared the pitch unplayable and um, left immediately. The Maestro Junior League were not amused by Lossmouth's actions and disqualified from the competition. Even and Canton were given a walkover into the next round. The final was played on the 12th of April in Elgin and so Canton muscle ended up in the field of the league champions again like for Sissel who had previously beaten for one. Falls were duly seen up half time, game over, <coughs> not at all. Within the first 15 minutes, Clanton had rolled back to his TC to Christie, Bruce Penalty and Grant. And now Clanton had all the pleasure until a late Charles Blakeway saw him score much more and claim a 40 victory. Meanwhile, back to the Junior Cup, Clanton Bay officials were left scurrying for the match when the Jack Lang, third line draw, saw him face the horrendous journey against Lost Side, Lord Royal Victoria, on that iron route. So, okay. it was reported that many of the players had to walk to a, a bus, had a horrendous journey, a horrendous street crossing, and not surprising, you went on to win 7 1. On the 23rd of June 1934, the Albany Press and Journal reported that the Council Football Club had an annual meeting and decided to withdraw from the Manchester Junior League. The report explained that despite the club getting £63 in donations, the club was still in debt by a balance of £56. It has been this duly due to the club's ill fortune of being drawn away in all cup ties. There were other reports that the Clanton did play in their competition called the McNiven Trophy, defeating the local side Nessie Bridge 2 1 in the final. This takes us up to 1937 and the disaster for the juniors. Early on, Walter Victoria mentioned the possibility of moving up to Hammer League and back on the junior team, Elgin had. Academy at Pease, Dufton, all were due from the league. Even the league was just four teams, 
and everybody forced to withdraw. By this time, 37, 38, we come around, we come, I had again changed his name from Grantham's Book Hub to Grantham's Peeve Book Hub. No reason was given. And there was played in the more local Susby Amateur League. There's poets are extremely limited in this league, apart from a local family like as Tom and Tow, who was under the TC, followed by Joy Bath Hospitality. If the poets were scarce for a 37 38 season, they were almost impossible for 38 39. In fact, if you go to near the end of the season, it's only as a footnote. The Grantham Spirits Athletic had forfeited the game in the semi final against the whole cup against Dufton because they had to play Dufton the following day against El Lothus and then they had a final. Why got forced to play twice in two games? Officially, I couldn't change, but I've since found out that Dufton had two football teams. It was a Dufton Football Club and a Dufton Distillery Football Club. In the report in London Fashion Journal in the 4th of August 1939, and the, and the headline, Gone to Win the Michi Cup, it was stated that the last minute goal by Mullers secured a 2 1 victory for the Canton against Aurora. The, the cup was presented by a gentleman called George Monroe. I believe he ha who has family in connection with the Council of Spain. <coughs> it's also notable that, that unlike the First World War when the Scottish Football League allowed football to continue, all football was immediately stopped on the 13th of September and no official marches were to take place until the following season 46-47. However, the only call it a war leading on marches, and I'll be against to discover any marches that you put on the Park or the Vault a council team. Going through the newspaper articles during the war years, you can help help be moved by the daily reports of deaths of active servicemen, now and again a name which comes from Grandin Spain or a football connection. And I think it's a tribute to them all <coughs> that we should always remember them. Or the same goes through the leading cycles, lest we forget. Before I end my position, I'd like to take advantage of you all being pleasant, yet to one, make an appeal, and two, to bring you up to date with some information. One, in the early 1940s to the late 1950s, Gunson's the 24th Leary Cup had a notable successful football team. None more so in 1955 when they won the league championship at all trophies. However, I've only been discovered to have one very poor quality photo of London's P. Leary football team, and I'd be extremely grateful if anybody had any photographs I could borrow before the publication of my book. But here's my own tip point two. Only last week, I had a very successful meeting with Mr. Bo Thompson of Thompson, Thompson Partnership, who is also the city of Inverley Local Football Club, and he has agreed that his firm will publish a copy of 250 copies of my book, usual price per pound 50. I have to get the final draft to him in May. You can part with me in the printed draft in mid June, and all be well, the book will be published by late July, early August. In time for such a special 30 season in August. Thank you very much.